This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, we're still dealing with obeds, but now let's look at example four, uh, which is another example of this allocating and apportioning, but a bit more involved. Uh, and it does lead on to one final thing, uh, uh, which you can be asked to deal with. But have a look at example four with me. It says production overhead costs for the period, and we're given a list there. There's rent, there's heat, supervisor, so on. But the total overheads are 80,000. And the question at the end says, allocate and apportion overhead costs amongst the three departments. Well, you can see we have three departments in the factory, processing, packing, and canteen. So I'm going to take, in each case, the total of the overhead and split it between processing, packing, and canteen. And there's more information at the bottom there, space, MBV, they won't use that term in the exam, but the value of the equipment, the number of employees. So when we come to uh, split these overheads, we'll make the best use of this information available. Let me show you what I mean. If we go down one by one, the first is the factory rent, which in total is 20,000. How are we going to share that between the departments? Well, if you look at the information available, of those three, space, equipment, employees, uh, I think the only sensible one is to do it on the basis of space. And so in total, how much space is the factory using? There's 50,000 square metres in processing, 25 in packing, 5 in canteen. So a total of 80,000 square metres. And so processing, because that's 50,000, I'll take 50 eightieths of the rent and give it to processing, which is how much? 5 eighths of 20,000. 12,500. And in a similar way, packing is 25,000 out of 80, so 25 eightieths, which is what, 6,250. And finally, the canteen, that's 5,000, again, out of a total of 80, which comes to how much? I get 12.50. So I've apportioned rent between the, the three departments. Let's carry on with all of them. The next one is heat, uh, the total 5,000. And again, surely, of the information available to us, the most sensible is going to be space again. So 50 eightieths to processing. Three, one, two, five. Uh, to packing, uh, again, 25 eightieths. It's 1562.5. I'm not going to rest around with 0.5, I'll do things to the nearest dollar. So 1563. And to canteen, again, 5 eightieths, which is 312.5, I'll round that one down. But again, we're not worried about rounding, I'm not worried about one or two dollars here. Uh, next, supervisors. Well, the first one is a supervisor for the processing department, which is 15,000. Well, here we can allocate, uh, because it's a supervisor for processing, surely all of that will go to processing. And similarly, the supervisor for packing, which is how much? 10,000? Well, all of that will be allocated to packing. Uh, depreciation. 7,000. Well, again, look at the information available. Uh, we're told the value of the equipment, so surely uh, that's the basis on which we'll apportion. And so in total, 300,000, 300, there's a total of 700,000 equipment. Processing is 300 out of 700. So we'll give that proportion 3,000. 
Uh, similarly, packing, 300 out of 700, so again, 3,000. And finally, canteen, 100 out of the top of 700,000. 1,000. Uh, canteen expenses? Uh, well, again, we'll allocate. Canteen is one of our departments, and incidentally, because these are production overheads, the canteen, uh, where we feed the workers, it must be feeding the workers in production. But anyway, canteen is canteen, so allocate. And finally, the welfare costs. I don't know, maybe we pay their medical expenses and things. But in total, 5,000. It's for the factory employees, and so surely the sensible way of allocating, apportioning rather, is based on numbers of employees. 50, 40, 10, there are 100 employees, 50 are in processing, so that proportion 2,500, 40 out of the 100 are in packing, which is 2,000. And finally, canteen, 10 out of 100. 5,000, so 500. And there we are. It obviously takes a bit longer, but the same principle as in the earlier lecture. And so let's check the totals. As a double check, the total overheads 20, 25, 40, 50, uh, 60, 70, 80,000. More importantly, how does it split between them? Well, to processing, 12,500. Plus three one two five, eighteen thousand, two five hundred, thirty six one two five, uh, to packing, two two eight one three, uh, and finally to canteen. I get 21.062. Now then, that's example four, and all that example asks us for is to allocate and apportion the production overhead. So we know that in processing it's 36,000, 125, in packing, 22,813, and so on. But remember that although it's not asked for here, if you think back to the earlier examples, the previous lectures, we split the overheads between departments and then we absorb to get a cost per hour so we can cost out our units. But there's one little problem here in that although these are three departments in the factory, the canteen doesn't actually produce any units. You know, processing, we're making units, packing, we're packing units, but in canteen, well, it is a cost of the factory because it's feeding the factory workers. But, of course, there are no units going through that department. We can't absorb. We can't get a cost per hour or a cost per unit for the canteen. And we call the canteen a service department. Because it's providing a service to the other two departments, which we call production departments. So again, I know I'm repeating, but it is a cost in the factory. It's a factory overhead. But again, it's not actually producing anything. It's providing a service to the other departments. Another example would be maintenance. We might have a maintenance department in the factory or a repairs department which don't actually produce anything. They're a service department, they do work for the other departments. And so, and this is actually example five in the notes, if we do have any service departments, then once we've got the total cost, we say, okay, the canteen is doing work for the other departments, we'll charge the other departments with that 21,000. We take the 21,000 and we recharge 
the service department. So 21,062, we take that from the canteen and we say, well, let's charge uh, what were the production and processing and packing with that 21,000. And how shall we charge them? What will be the sensible basis? Well, since the canteen is there to feed the workers, surely the sensible way of splitting it, of charging it, will be based on the number of workers in each department. Assuming, obviously, they all eat the same. But how many production workers are there? There are 50 in processing, 40 in packing. So there are 90 production workers. And therefore, well, 50 in processing, 50 ninetieths of the cost will charge to processing. There are 40 in packing, so 40 ninetieths will charge to uh, packing. And what does that come to? To processing 50 ninetieths of 21062. 11701. Again, I'm not worried about a few cents. And to packing 40 ninetieths of 21062 is 9361. And so finally, the total cost of the processing department, 47,826. And the total cost of the packing department, uh, 32,174. I think I've had to get right. And of course, the two together, uh, 32, oh, oh, I've added it wrong there, sorry, 47, it was a good job, I double checked, 47,826, because of course the two together should come back to that 80,000, and now they do. And although that's the end of that question, that's all we're asked to do, again, do remember that in real life, we then say, well, how many hours are we working in processing and absorbing at a cost per hour, and similarly, how many hours are we working packing at a cost per hour, and then we could do our cost per unit. All right, I said at the end of the last lecture that there was one more to come. In fact, I was lying, uh, because we've had one lecture there, going through example four and five. However, the one remaining problem I will leave to Seriously, one final lecture. Because uh, the one remaining problem is what happens if there is more than one service department? In the next lecture, I'll show you why that can be a problem and also how we deal with it.